membership, but then my soul had a stir, and I earnestly prayed until I knew without a doubt I was saved. Without a doubt I'm saved. I've been born again, washed in Calvary's flow, pure and white within. Oh, I once was lost by sin's chains enslaved, but now I know without a doubt I'm saved. Amen. Now there's a deep settled peace in my happy soul. Now my life has a name and heaven is my home. And this world's gathering storms, they won't make me afraid. Because I can say, without a doubt, I'm saved. Without a doubt, I'm saved. I've been born again, washed in Calvary's flow, pure and white within. Oh, I once was lost by sin's chains enslaved. But now I know, without a doubt, I'm saved. I'm glad I know. Without a doubt, I'm saved. I'm not no singer, but God told me to pray. You just do the phone in the floor. That's all right. It ain't important. Okay. Y'all turn over to John chapter number one. John chapter number one. I only grabbed the phone because I needed my water and it was on the way. John chapter number one. We're going to finish it up tonight, Lord willing. I know it's Mother's Day. I know you want to get back to your family, so we won't take all night long. We'll just take until God says shut up. Amen. <laughs> John chapter number one. And since we're going to do this verse by verse, I'm not getting ready to read the, the rest of those verses. I'll read them as we go. Um, so I tell you what. Um, Jason, you pray over the preaching for me, please, sir. Ask the Lord to bless the preaching hour. My dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity to come back to your house to, this evening, dear Lord. And I thank you for everyone that's seen it. And Lord, just bless them in a mighty way. And Lord, this now be his preacher, David, dear Lord, as he gives us the word and the preaching. Lord, just give him the word that we need to hear to apply to our everyday life, dear Lord, so we can be better examples for thee and uh, bring people into your house today, dear Lord. Lord, we just can't thank you enough for all that you do for us each and every day. In him I pray. Amen. 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 Y'all look with me at verse chapter number 1. We're in verse 35 through 36 right now. We're going to read the rest of this chapter and finish it up. But we're going to start at verse 35. It says, Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Now notice in John chapter 1, that's the second time that John has made this statement. I want you to notice, we read verses 1 through 18 two weeks ago. And it told us everything that Jesus is for us. And then you go to the next passage of Scripture and it's all about John talking about Jesus and how great Jesus is. And, and John gave the Pharisees four answers on why he was about baptizing and dunking people underwater. And then Wednesday night we studied baptism and salvation. Well, today they're getting ready to meet Jesus. <laughs> today they've got their eyes off of John now and their eyes are now fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He has stepped out on the scene, as John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. What's the definition of that word, behold? I looked it up in my 1828 Webster's Dictionary. And I think I've said this before here. I say it everywhere I go. And you might hear me say it more than once. I believe everybody ought to have one. I don't believe in just Googling things. I believe Google's a good tool to have. But when you Google on Google, it'll give you one definition. Whereas if you go back to an original Webster's Dictionary from 1828, which has got every word in the King James Bible in it, and the original meaning of what that word was in the English, okay, it helps you and it'll teach you different definitions. Do you know how many definitions it gave for this one word? Three. Three definitions for one word. That word, behold. Here's the first one. To fix the eyes upon. To see with attention. To observe with care. I don't know about you, but I come tonight to behold the Lamb of God. Amen. To observe Him with care. To seek and to fix my attention solely on Him. That's why I came here. I didn't come here to see you, even though I enjoy seeing you. 
I didn't come here to hear the lovely choir sing, even though I enjoy hearing that lovely choir. I didn't come here to hear Miss April sing, even though she did an awesome job singing. And I didn't even come to sing to you tonight. That, was, that wasn't even expected. I just did it. But you know what I'm here for? I want to behold Him. Amen. I want to Amen. see Him. I want to set my attention. I want to set my eyes. And I want to fix them on Him. This thing's not about me and it's not about you. John the Baptist knew. He was out telling everybody, Hey, this thing's all about the Lamb of God that's going to take away the sins of the world. Amen. That second definition is real simple. To look upon, to see. I'm here to look on Him. I want my eyes to be set on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here it is. This last one. If you're ever going to do anything for God, you've got to do this. To fix your attention upon something, to direct or fix the mind. Take your mind off of the world for just a few minutes. Take your mind off of Mother's Day glitter and all the barbecue and the good food that we ate. Take our minds off of the time that we just had with our families. Take our minds off of the issues that we discussed and the problems that everybody's got. And take your mind off of your financial issues, off of your health issues, off of everything else. And I want us to fix our mind on Jesus for a little while tonight. Amen. That's what John the Baptist said. He said, behold the Lamb of God. When you behold something, it's got all of your attention. Your mind is dead set on that thing. And until we get to that place, we can come to church. We can leave out. We can come back, like I said the other night, and leave out and keep coming and keep. But until we get to that place where we've got our mind and our eyes set on nothing but Jesus... Webb's Chapel Baptist Church ain't going to do nothing for God. Amen. Right. If we're so concerned with leaving the moment that we get in here, ain't nothing going to get done. Right. That's right. That's right. By that last definition, beholding Jesus is much more than just looking at him. I've heard preachers say many times, I want to set my eyes on Jesus. I want to do more than set my eyes on him. I want to set my mind on him. Amen. I want him to consume my mind tonight. And not only tonight, but when I leave this place, when I go off and I go off and study or when I'm visiting or when I'm soul winning or when I'm doing whatever I'm doing. When I was at work before, I, I wanted God to consume my mind. I want to be singing gospel songs all day long. I want to constantly be praying to Him, talking to Him, letting Him know that I love Him, letting Him know that I'm thankful for what He's done for me, letting Him know that, hey, you're a good God, you're a great God. When your mind is filled and consumed with the goodness of God and all those things, you can't help but to be joyous. Amen. Most people today are walking around with the molly grubs because they don't realize how good God is. They don't realize what we've got. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I've got a good God. It's getting your mind to a point that He's all you want. It doesn't matter if you've got a roof over your head or not. If you've got God. Amen. It doesn't matter if you've got a vehicle to get to where you need to get to as long as you've got God. Amen. If you lost everything in this world, can you say you'd still serve Jesus? I'm talking about beholding Him. Saying he is all I need. He's all I want. I don't need anything else but him. That's what I'm talking about tonight. It's amazing what happens in a life that finally gets to that point in their Christian walk. Some of you are there. Some of you have been there and left it. Some of you are not there. Never, never, <coughs> never, never done what I'm talking about tonight in just beholding the Lamb of God. There are so many Christians that are walking around defeated and sad. Because they're not at this point where their mind is fixed on Him at all times. That's where I want us to be at. I want us to be at that point. Not just on Sunday morning. Not just crying because we heard a good song and it stirred our heart. But because we're out doing things for, 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 for not for us but for others. And out doing what we do on an everyday basis. I want us to think about God at those times too. I want to preach on that thought. Behold the Lamb of God. I want to give you four effects that I want to have on your life. If you'll just behold Him tonight. If you'll just behold him. Number one, verse number 37. If you follow, God, not follow, but if you behold the Lamb of God, four things will happen for you. Number one in verse 37. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Number one, if you're beholding him, you're going to follow him. Right. Amen. Whether you like the direction he's going or not. Yeah. They said, we're following Jesus. They heard him speak. And immediately started following. I love the fact that Jesus said that my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Later on in John, we're going to study that. He says that. My sheep know my voice. I'm glad I know his voice tonight. Amen. I'm glad I know when he tells me where I need to be. I'm glad he directs my bark where I need to go. Amen. Right. Shows me the direction that I need to go. I remember the day that I sold out to God. 
And I really started beholding him for myself. I told you a little bit about that the other the other week. When I really got to the point where he was all I needed, he was all I wanted. I got saved when I was 12. Amen. But when I turned 16, 17, 17 years old, the Lord really started dealing with my heart. And I told you he started tendering me, started showing me that he wanted me to preach, told me that you can't preach doing what you're doing, listening to the things you're listening to, watching the things that you're watching, doing what you're... And, and you know what? I got right with God immediately. And I told you last week, I got rid of all my, uh, my music CDs that weren't godly. And we know what's godly and what's not godly. Amen? Mm -hmm. right. I encourage anybody in here that is not 25 or older, and this may be extreme, but I encourage you don't listen to anything other than gospel music. Amen. Amen. If you're 25 and, and, and younger, don't listen to anything other than gospel music. Right. You say, why is that? Because that is the time when your mind is going to be filled with everything and you're going Amen. to absorb it. Amen. When I turned 17, I quit listening to secular music and I did not pick it back up. I did not pick it back up. That meant country. That meant rap. And by the way, after we get done with our study on doctrine, the next thing we're going to do a study on is music. Okay? So we're going to reveal a lot of things on Wednesday nights that you may not know about the music you listen to. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's get deep in the Word of God. So the next study will be on music. But I got rid of all that stuff because it has an impact on your mind. And I encourage, if you're 25 and older, I encourage you to cut the news off. Right. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's what consumes the mind of, yep. of a lot of people. You sit at home, you watch Fox News, and you worry, mm -hmm. and you stress. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you filling your mind with it? Cut it off. <laughs> if you don't look at it, you won't know about it. Most young people don't watch the news. Therefore, they have no idea what's going on out in the world. I don't watch the news. I know a little bit. I'm on Facebook. You can't help but to see news on Facebook. Political stuff is just about all you see on Facebook. I was at the point at one time where I was getting ready to delete Facebook altogether because I was so fed up with it. But get to the point where your mind is on Jesus. It can't be on Jesus if it's always on the world. If it's always consumed, it can't be on Jesus if it's consumed with everything else. You say, well, I need to know what's going on so that I can be ready. Read your Bible. Amen. Read your Bible. That's all you need. We don't even have cable, by the way. No. Y'all said the pulpit committee when they voted or talked to us, they said, uh, the church will offer to pay for internet, but we will not pay for cable. I said, good, I don't want it. I don't have it. We don't have cable. I don't have it. Now, I like movies. We have. You go to my house, you'll see a ton of movies. I'm a movie watcher, but I ain't paying for cable. I ain't paying for the news to put all this stuff in my head. There's nothing wrong with watching TV. What I'm saying is, you've got to get to a point where you're solid in your foundation. That's why I say 25 and younger, don't listen to anything other than gospel music. Because you've got to get to a point where you're saying, hey, that's all I need. That's all I need. And you say, oh, that's no big deal. My music doesn't, doesn't affect the way that I live. Then why can't you quit listening to it? Why can't you cut the radio off? Why has it always got to be in your ear? At that point, this point, nothing was going to keep me from him. I decided that I didn't want that. I didn't want the world. I didn't want the things of the world. I, and, and you know, I had even got to the point where I unplugged the television. At that time in my life, God was so put so much heavy conviction on me, I unplugged it and I didn't watch it. I didn't even turn it on. I didn't get on Facebook. I almost didn't eat. I fasted for the longest time. That's what I'm talking about. I probably lost 20 pounds during that time. Just getting along with God. While I was 17 years old, getting along by myself with Him, just me and Him, no distractions, Talking about beholding him. When you get to that point, you'll follow him wherever he takes you. Amen. Wherever he takes you. If you get to that point where you can cut it all out of your life. I told um, every job that I've ever had. A lot of people don't agree with this, but it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. I told every job that I've ever had that I will not work during church. I right. will not miss church because of work. And can I say, I've been working since I was 16 years old. I'm 31 years old now, and I've never missed church right. because of work. Amen. 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 God yep. has always worked it out. If you're up front with them and you tell them, hey, God is all I want. God is all I want. God will supply me the money that I need to do what I need to do. Yep. God is all I want. Yes. They'll work with you. Yep. I've never had an issue with that. Nope. Never. They'll work with you. Mm -hmm. I got rid of I've already said that part. Um, I only listen to preaching. Nothing but preaching. Nothing good Bible preaching. You said in Sunday school, let's rephrase that. 
good Bible preaching, not TV preaching. I'm talking about I bought CDs from preachers that I'd heard during revivals, and I'd constantly re replay those CDs the whole time. While I'm riding down the road to work, that's what I had. I had an MP3 player filled with nothing but preaching. That's all I listened to all day long, nonstop. You want to get close to God, you want to behold Him, you've got to fill your mind with something other than all this other stuff that's there to fill your mind with. Beholding Him. He was drawing me closer to Him. I began at that time working a bus route. I began uh, teaching Sunday school at 17 years old. 17 years old. Young man. Young man. There are still good young men. Amen. There are still some young people that want to serve Jesus. Amen. I don't care what everybody says. There are still people, if you will get a hold of them and let God use you to teach them and preach to them and do the things that God wants to do in their life, they can be used of God. Amen. No matter how far out in the world they've gone. Amen. 17 years old, nobody would have said that I'd have been preaching at 17, would they? No. They, they done wrote me off, said he's done, ain't got to forget him. He ain't ever going to do nothing for God. 17 years old, I, God turned my life around Amen. because I was willing to follow him. Mm -hmm. Willing to follow him. I began, I said that straight preaching and soul winning, I started that when I was 17 years old. And I haven't stopped. I have not stopped. You know why? Because I beheld God. Beheld God. When you've got him fixed on your mind all the time, you can't get in trouble. How are you going to get in trouble if you're always talking about Jesus? Amen. How are you going to get in trouble if you've always got the Word of God in your face? Yeah. It don't work that way. You can't be sinning and reading the Bible at the same time. It'll tear you up. Yeah. The problem is yeah. you put Him down for a little while. You take your mind off of the things of, of the Word, the things of God. And that's when you start getting in trouble and start meddling in stuff you ain't got no business meddling in. I said, wherever He leads me, I'll follow. If you really behold the Lamb of God, you'll follow Him wherever He leads I think of about two months ago, and then I'm moving on to my next point. No, it wasn't two months. It's been almost a year. It's been over a year ago. Why am I thinking two months? <laughs> over a year ago, there was a church in Angier, North Carolina, that was looking for a pastor. Oh, yeah. It's and a, a, I, a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, put it on Facebook, <clears throat> tagged me in a comment. They said they were looking for a pastor, and a, it was four hours away mm -hmm. from where we went. And I said, yep. that's four hours away. Ain't no way I'm going to go down there. That's a lot of mine. Why would he even tag me in that nonsense? That's exactly what I said. Why would he? Hey, I ain't going four hours away. We had revival that week, and God got all over my heart. And every message that night, or that week, was all about faith. How big is your God? How can he take care of you? And this and that. And God just got all over me, and I sent him a resume the next week. Well, they called me the next day, want me to come down there and preach. So I went down there, and I preached for a month for them. They've got a pastor now, but my point is I followed him four hours away. If it had come to the point where he would have said, they would have said, we want you to be our pastor, right then I would have took it, and I'd have followed God in yeah. the direction that he had for my life. But that wasn't God's will for my life. Mm -hmm. It's to be right here. Amen. Right. Amen. My point is I followed him all the way to where he had me. I didn't know you guys. We don't know nothing. I mean, other than us talking and meeting, we don't know each other. Following him. I told you my first Sunday morning here, I'm just along for the ride. Amen. amen. God's leading us and showing us where we need to go. We'll get there eventually. Amen. 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 Once you behold him, then you can follow him. Look with me at verse 38 and 39. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, but he interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. When you really start beholding God, you'll start seeking him. You'll start seeking him. What were they seeking? They, he said, What are you looking for? That's what Jesus, when he saw them, he said, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? His, their, his, his, their answer was, We want to see where you dwell. We want to see where you dwell. Hey, I want to be where he's dwelling at. Amen. amen. I like it. What the preacher said. I want to be there where the where the spirit and the water uh, the water spout where it comes out. Amen. That's right. The definition of seek to go in, search, or quest for. To go in, search, or quest for. Hey, I'm on a search. I'm on a quest to find Jesus. I'm on a search and I'm on a quest to find where he's at, where he's dwelling. Where I need to be because I want to be where Jesus is at. 
I don't want to be somewhere that Jesus is not. I want to be where the Holy Ghost is at. I want to be where the fire's at. I want to be where the blood, sweat, and tears are at. That's where I want to be. If I want to be on some island with the frozen chosen, I'd be there. But I want to be where God's at. Amen. Amen. I want to seek and find where he's at. Jesus asked his disciples, what are you looking for? They said, we want to be where you're at. They said, we want to spend some time with you. He said, well, that's easy. Just come and see where I live. So he took them to where he was dwelling at. Later on, you'll find out it's just an old rock. That's all he had a place to lay his head on was an old rock. You'll find that out. He said, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He didn't have a place to lay his head. So he took him out to the wilderness, really and truly, because that's exactly where he was staying at. Could you imagine the Holy Ghost meeting you out in the middle of nowhere? He did. Jesus Christ met them where they were at, took him to where he dwells at, which is out in the wilderness. I think of old Elijah out there with them old dry, dead bones. Nothing there, just a bunch of bones. And he gets stirred up and starts preaching and gets excited. The Holy Ghost breathed life into those bones, amen. And God put the life in them. And then bones started getting standing up singing the hip bones connected to the leg bone. Leg bones connected to the foot bone. I imagine they just got up and started singing and chanting and praising God and running around. Could you imagine being Elijah and seeing dead bones running around? I don't want to be in there, no dead bones, amen. I want us to be alive, amen. 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 You know what? God can put life in anything. He proved that with Elijah. I don't know about you, but I want to be where God is. I want to be where he dwells. You say, well, where does he dwell at? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to let you know. He dwells where preaching is. <laughs> he dwells where preaching is. He dwells. He said that he likes preaching. That's what Jesus Christ said. He likes preaching. I told you all about that one guy that asked me. He said, what do you like to do? And I said, I like preaching. I was at where I like preaching. I like listening to preaching. I like doing preaching. I like preaching in the streets. I like preaching in Walmart. I like preaching in Burger King. Hey, I've done it before, amen. I'll preach wherever I'm at. I might do a few other things too. I like to have a good time, but I like to preach. He dwells where the church is. That's where preaching's at. Church, us coming together. He dwells on our praise. That's what he wants. He wants us to raise our hand every once in a while and say, Amen, glory to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you do it biblically, it's okay. Right. It's when you start speaking in them unknown tongues, that's when it becomes a problem, amen. amen. That's right. amen. The Bible clearly states that he wants our praise. He wants us to shout. When you get to heaven, if you don't shout down here, you're going to be miserable. You say, I can't stand somebody loud and screaming in my ear. You're going to hate it in heaven. Amen. You're going to be miserable. They say, I don't go to a ball game because I can't hear screaming. You ain't going to want to go to heaven. You might as well just... Matter of fact, you can't even go to hell either because there's going to be screaming in hell. Amen. You're just going to be miserable for all of eternity yes. if you don't like yes. shouting. I like to shout. I like to be around shouters. God likes praise. God likes worship. Amen. Yeah. Not only is he there in the church where praise is, but he dwells where his word is. He dwells in this book. You really want to get a hold of God? All you got to do is pick his book up and start reading it. And this book alone will make you want to say amen, hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah. Amen. He dwells where you pray at. There's been so many times that I've went in my prayer closet. I told you about, I, don't, I may have told you about it. I had a creek. At our old apartment that we lived at, and when we moved, I didn't have it anymore. But I used to love just going down to that old creek and praying, spending time with God. I seen deer out there. I seen all kinds of things, and I just start praying. And it's like you get around God Himself, just consumes you. You get stirred up and excited. And you're ready to fight hell with a water pistol Amen. <laughs> when you get in your prayer closet. Talking about praying. When we pray, God does big things. He's where we pray at. They wanted to, uh, to, to spend time, and they did spend all day with him. Remember as a teenager during this time in my life, uh, during that time of beholding him, where I got dedicated to him, and I solely said, you're it, you're all I want, I don't want anything else, and I haven't stopped doing that since then. But when I was at this point, I remember working my bus route. We'd go to church Sunday morning, and we was telling, I think we was telling you this last night when we was talking. We'd go to church Sunday morning. I was 17 now, keep that in mind. I wasn't... 30, I wasn't 20, I was 17. A teenager that was serving the Lord. Not me, this is God doing this through me. But I'm Amen. saying it's possible that a teenager can serve the Lord. But we would go and we would work our bus route on Sunday morning and then we would come back to the church 
and we would now by the time we got done with our bus ride it's about already two o'clock in the afternoon okay so then we would go eat at mcdonald's or burger king or somewhere cheap get off the dollar menu and then after we <coughs> eat we would go back to the church and we would play football for a little while and we'd hang out and then when we got tired of that we'd go in there and we'd take us a nap on the pew and then when church time came we'd get up for church We'd still have our church clothes on. We'd have brought extra clothes for playing and then come in. We were at church all day long. It wasn't a question of whether we were going to go or not. It was, hey, we're going to church. Amen. That's the way it ought to be. It ought not to be a question. Well, it's Mother's Day. Should we go to church? Yes. Well, it's Christmas Day. Should we go to church? Yes. Don't we celebrate Christ for Christmas? Why would we cancel church on Christmas? Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be where God's at. Amen. Amen. While I'm at work, I want to seek Him. While I, I remember at NVR when I was working there, picking up boards. I'm talking about boards that are bigger than I am. And we would take them and we'd saw them down in the address blocks. Or we'd saw them down in the, um, in the little uh, gables that you put on the, the front of the house. And I'm talking about 20 foot boards. I'd saw them down in the, the, the like eight or three or four foot and make things with them and do all kinds of stuff. I'd be sawing and singing. People, look, nobody had, everybody had earplugs in, so they couldn't hear me. I'd be sawing and singing. I'd be sawing and praising the Lord. Remember, I worked at Burger King for years. I was a manager there for three years, and I'd take my earplugs and I'd have them in my head while I was working in the kitchen. And somebody'd come by me, "What you listening to? Preaching? You want to hear it?" <laughs> and I'd take it out and I'd let them hear my preaching. That gave me an opportunity to witness to them. I'm talking about following Him, no matter where I'm at. I want to seek him. If I'm at Walmart, I want to seek him. If I'm uh, in the grocery store, I want to seek him. doesn't matter where I'm at. I want to be where he's at. I want to dwell with him. Number three, verses 40 through 46. Notice the first thing they did. They started following him. Then they started seeking after him. And then verse 40. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. You notice what he did? He went and got somebody and brought him to Jesus. Okay? The rest of that verse says, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is interpreted a stone. The day following, now this is the next day, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. He said, Is there any, talking about Jesus, he said, Is there any good thing that could come out of Nazareth? Now, you know, back in those days, the different um, people, different nations, different countries, different parts would argue with each other. Did y'all know that the Jews did not have anything to do with the Samaritans? That's right. They would argue and they would bicker just because of the color of their skin. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Sound like where we live out today, don't it? Yeah. Bunch of, but a bunch of people can't get along just because they're a little different on the outside, amen? Right. That's shame on them. Shame on them. Do you know what? They would argue, and, and he said that about Jesus. Now, later on, Jesus puts him in his place, kind of jokingly, lovingly. Jesus, and if you study, Jesus is a smart aleck. Jesus really, if you study it out, he really is. He said a lot of smart aleck things. And it cracks me up when I read it because hey, a lot of people would be mad at Jesus if he spoke to them. But they started telling others about Jesus. And he, Nathaniel told Philip, he said, is there anything good thing that can come out of Nazareth? Because they didn't like the Nazarenes. And, and Philip said, why don't you come and see? You know what they say about us? Is there any good thing that can come out of a church? A bunch of crazies running the aisles and screaming and hollering. Bunch of crazies, faithful Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They don't never have no free time to work all day and then go to church. And then they, 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 they're they always at church and always singing and always doing this and always doing that. They're crazy. That's what they say about us. Amen. I hear it all. If you're doing what you ought to do, that's what they're going to say about you. Amen. It's the truth. Do you know what? God's good. Amen. 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 Notice that the first thing the man did was go find his friend, go find his brother, go find his family member and said, Jesus, come see him. Come meet a man. Come meet Jesus. When you're really beholding him, you'll tell others about him. You'll tell others about him. You can't keep it in. 
I've told you before, I like bowling. We like all that stuff. And when we get excited, we'll scream and holler. We like to have a good time. When it comes time to worship, it's time to worship. Amen. I, 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 Beth was picking on me because at Kendall's birthday party uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday, I come in there and I, I was talking to Beth and some of the other ladies and I said, let's party hard, you know. And she was picking on me. She said, I used to pastor saying party hard. Listen, I preach hard. I worship hard, I soul win hard, I work hard, and I play hard. Amen. Amen. Everything I do, I want to go all out. So I want to have a good time at the same time while I'm doing all this. Amen. Amen. You know, we ought to give everything we've got in everything. Amen. So when I say that, I wasn't talking about being sinful and partying. I was saying... Let's have a good time. Let's That's have a good right. time. You can party without being sinful. Amen. 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 That's Jesus right. did it. We're going to study that uh, next Sunday night when he turned water into wine. <gasps> Jesus turned water into wine? Oh, I got your attention. And they were partying when Jesus turned water into wine, right? right. The wedding of Canaan? Yep. We're going to study that next Sunday night. question is, did he turn it into alcoholic wine? <laughs> All right? But, <clears throat> if you're in love with somebody, or if you love something, you'll talk about it. Right. You'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. You're not ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. I'm a Duke fan. Yeah. <laughs> Any booze? No booze? Oh, I'm a Duke. Duke. I ruined it for you, didn't I? <laughs> I'm a Duke fan. I'm Duke. So, all right, I got one. Okay? So when UNC loses, I go around bragging. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. I talk about it. When UNC wins, I go in my corner and cry. Because <laughs> I'm not proud of UNC. I don't like UNC. I don't want them to win. I was pulling for Kansas at the end of that uh, tournament this year. Some of y'all, that don't even matter to you, but it matters to me. But you know what? If you love something, you'll brag about it. You'll Amen. talk about it. Yeah. You'll go around and you'll tell everybody that you know and everybody that you see about it. Amen? Amen. Real quick, we said we're going to... Um, you'll follow him. You'll seek him. You'll tell others about him. Last one, verse 47 through 51. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Jesus had called him out right then. He said, Behold, an Israelite that has no guile. He said, Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> and then verse number 48, Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Ain't it amazing that Jesus knew exactly where he was at when he made the comment that he made and then showed him that he was God by telling him, hey, I already know what you said about me. You ain't even met me. They had, and Philip ain't even had time to talk to him about it. So he knew that Philip didn't go back and tell him what he said, knew that he didn't go back and say, hey, he said that he's, he's, a, he's a Nazarite. Ain't nothing good comes out of Nazarene. Nazarite. Naz um, Nazareth. Verse 48. Nathanael said unto him, What knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before the, that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. All because Jesus revealed himself to him and showed him that he was God. You know what happened at that moment, I believe, for him? I believe he began to believe on Jesus Christ. From that moment, I believe he got saved. In his heart, I believe he got saved. God revealed to you who he was. He revealed to you who you were. And you know what? We sometimes believe that our blessings stop right there. We believe that's it. We're saved. All right. That's the end of it. Let's go home. Let's go to heaven. Hurry up, Lord. Come quickly. But you know what Jesus told him? Verse number 40, uh, 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And, the, and he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He said, you're going to see so much more than just salvation. I'm glad that the day that I got saved, since that day I've seen His works. Not just in saving me, but in changing my life. Changing my heart. Changing me as an individual. I am not the same person that I was the day that I got saved. And if you're honest, you're not either. You're a totally different creature. Behold, all things become new. Amen? Amen. Everything changes when you get saved. And it's not an instant change. You're not instantly, miraculously different. It's a gradual change that God puts in your heart. He helps you to mature. Helps you to become more like Him. 
as we live and as we grow and as we grow every single day and word the, read the Word of God and listen to the Word of God preached, it begins to change us. Jesus told him that he was going to see so much more than that. I'm glad that the day that I got saved was the day that my salvation started and I got to see his works. I've seen him take old drunks and change their lives. I've seen him take crackheads and change their lives. I've seen him take people that you never would have thought, including myself, and change their life and give them everything that they could have ever asked for. That's what he did for me, amen. I can only dream of what the Lord's doing for me right now. He's good. In closing, behold the Lamb of God. He wants you to have it all. He wants you to follow Him. He wants you to seek Him. He wants you to tell about Him. He wants you to see His works. We have to get to the point. April, you come on up and play the piano for us. You have to get to the point, though, where you're beholding Him. Beholding Him. Seeing Him for who He is and what He is. He's not just some person that we go to when we have a need. Not just some person that we go to when we're in des desires of our health. He's somebody that we can talk to at any time that we want to talk to him. Amen. I'm glad for grace and mercy because I can access the king's throne anytime I want. Y'all stand up. Hey, will you play a